This video is going to show us how to open uh, Synapse, so Synapse data with the PetraOrg software and how to import the data uh, for data processing with PetraOrg. So the first thing we're going to do is click the Open Waters tab and select the file of interest. Uh, click Select Folder and this is going to open up a dialog box for us um, where this top box has the uh, the chromatogram if you're doing LCMS. Um, if you're doing direct infusion, then this is just the chromatogram of your direct infusion, which is essentially the number of scans and uh, the acquisition time. Uh, the middle box shows us the mobilogram for the entire sample, and the bottom box shows us the mass spectrum. Okay, so a few things to point out. Um, we can zoom in to any region by left clicking and dragging uh, across that region and then we can zoom out by clicking this back button. If we want to look at a single scan you can right click on the chromatogram and this will show you a single scan mass spectrum and if you zoom in you'll see the single scan mobilogram and if you want to sum the data again you will right click and drag across the chromatogram and this will give you uh, both the summed mass spectrum and the summed mobilogram. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is set our instrument parameters for our, uh, or set our parameters for importing the data. So um, first we want to set our M over Z range. We can do this either by entering it manually in these boxes or we can zoom in to our region of interest and collect, uh, click update M over Z range. You can see our values have changed here. We're going to select, um, we're going to make sure we have three uh, points per peak and your abundance threshold you're going to determine by zooming in uh, to a few regions across the mass spectrum and looking um, to see what is uh, a value that will be high enough where we don't collect a, a bunch of noise or pick a bunch of noise, but low enough where we see um, and actually select the majority of the peaks in mass spectrum. So for this um, sample, 0.5 is going to be a good number for us. For other samples, uh, you may have to change this around based on the quality of your data. Okay, so we'll zoom back out. Uh, we're using positive ion electrospray here, so we're going to set this to positive mode. You can also um, select negative ion mode if, if you're doing negative ESI or negative uh, APCI. And we are using lock mass to calibrate, um, and so we're going to click use lock mass, and we're going to also select find lock mass manually. So what this is going to do is going to look at the peaks at um, our lock mass uh, M over Z, which is 556. So we'll click Select Experimental M over Z. And you can see here uh, that this is the most abundant peak at that mass range, but if we zoom in, we see other peaks present as well. When you click on these peaks, the, they will highlight in red whichever one you've clicked. And this is our actual lock mass peak. You can see here it's highlighted in red. When we zoom out by right clicking, uh, you can see that that's the most abundant peak. And so we'll, once we highlight this, we'll uh, select use selected mass spectral peak. So that uh, plugs in the measured M over Z to this selected M over Z box. And then we have our theoretical M over Z here. So this is what we're going to use for our initial calibration. Um, we're going to use function 2 to look at uh, our M over Z values. And we're going to use the error ratio method. Um, so there are two methods. The error ratio method should be used if your mass spectral peaks overlap with your, um, your calibration, your lock mass peak. If your mass spectral peaks of interest do not overlap with your lock mass peak, then you would use coefficient update. Okay, so um, in our mobility, 
section, we're going to use the Blackman Smooth uh, method. Our window should be about half of the region of your mobility time. So here we've got a mobility time of uh, around um, maybe 10 or 12. So we're going to use a window of 5. That's just a general rule of thumb. Again, three points per peak, and we are going to uh, use an abundance threshold of, um, we're going to select 0.5 again. Okay. All right, so once we have all of these settings entered, um, we will click import MS and this will import the data as a list of peaks that we've chosen uh, based on these settings. Okay, so once the data has been imported, you'll see there are two tabs. The first tab is going to be the data table. The second tab is going to be the mass spectrum and the plot of drift time versus M over Z as seen here. Okay, so first up, um, we can open this uh, data table. Right now, all of the peaks that we've selected are classified as a no-hit, so these are peaks that have not been assigned a chemical formula, and the reason they are classified as no-hits is because we have not assigned chemical formulas to these peaks yet. But uh, essentially, you can see here we have a peak list, okay, with the number of peaks in the far left column, the uh, M over Z and the recalibrated M over Z value. So right now these values are the same because we haven't recalibrated the spectrum yet. Um, the percent relative abundance, the uh, relative abundance for each peak here, and then the drift time for each peak is located in the far right box. And what you'll see is that uh, for peaks that have a bimodal drift time, you'll get two separate uh, peak maximum values for drift time. Okay, so at this point we want to save our mass spectrum by clicking save, save PetroOrg, highlight the sample uh, or the, the file that we're interested in saving, and then um, we want to uh, save our sample as whatever name you, you're going to save. Okay. All right, so we've successfully imported all of the data and saved the file. Uh, our next video will show you how to um, recalibrate the mass spectrum and assign uh, chemical formulas to these peaks.